let's look at some of the, the big games happening here in Week 2. Uh, so the, the, big, the biggest games we want to talk about here uh, starts with the, the Vikings and Packers. This is a, a, a showdown, an NFC North showdown uh, between uh, two of the big quarterbacks, your favorite cousin, Kirk Cousins. and That's uh, my cousin, my favorite cousin, Dom. And, of course, second best Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, who everybody else seems to Man, think is the best the quarterback. second best Aaron. He heist this Super Bowl you all give him credit for. Charles Woodson, I got your back, homie. That's your Super Bowl, man. So talk to me about this game. What do you see happening here? It's uh, it's in Green Bay. Absolutely. I see the monkey coming out my cousin's back. I see the monkey coming out my cousin's back. I see because they're going to pound it with Dalvin, um, Dalvin Cook. I love what Zimmer did from last year, what he anticipated, what he said he's going to do this season. He's going to get the ball out of Kirk Cousins' hand. Put it behind his defensive line and behind Dalvin Cook, who was very, very impressive in week one. So I anticipate that even though Green Bay showed, uh, impre- they were very impressive as well. Um, as far as, you know, Coach Patton and the defense against Nagy and the Chicago Trubisky and the Bears. But I just think Curzon is a better situation. I just think the Vikings got a better assets of offense. I just think they have different levels of players from uh, from the running game to Cooper, uh, to uh, um, Adam Thielen, to Steph Diggs, so they just, and Calvin Rudolph, they just have an array of sets of offensive guys that that could give Green Bay a little bit of issues. And I think my cousin's gonna outdo, outdo the second best Aaron, and my cousin's gonna take this dub, baby, this dub in Lambeau. Uh, now we're saying that the, the Packers, uh, they both one and zero coming in. The Packers, I'm, I, I had forgotten. I'm glad you mentioned it that they played the Bears. That opening game was the most boring opening game. The Packers won ten to three over uh, over uh, Mitch Trubisky, who looks confused as hell as as the rest Same of us. Old Mitch, happy feet, yeah. happy feet, Mitch, happy feet. None of us know why he's in the NFL, and he's starting to wonder it himself. I think happy by the looks on that. Feet, Mitch, baby, he be holding the clipboard in a couple seasons, man. The only reason why, because they're going to hold on to him a season too long. Vikings, on the other hand, beat the Falcons 28-12. Falcons not off to the start we'd hope. Matt Ryan throwing two picks in, in that game. Excellent defense over there in Minnesota. Kirk, Kirk Cousins, yeah, uh, less than 100 yards and a touchdown. Not How many? He only, he only threw the ball, what, 10 times? 10 that, times, 8 of 10. All. The 80%, man. That's all we say. What do we say we're going to do with my cousin? He finna share this, man. My cousin, that's why he's my cousin. He's sharing the load. Yeah, they gave him $84 million to throw the ball 10 times. Damn We're going to see what happens skippy. next week. All right, let's talk about another game here in week two. I want to talk about the uh, the Seahawks and the Steelers. Now, the Seahawks had a game that was much like the Eagles in that it looked like the first half they treated like a preseason game, spotted the other team some points, and, and then uh, came back to beat the Bengals uh, in, in the second half. The Seahawks uh, looked good, not great. Uh, they will be taking on the Steelers, who played, uh, of course, got their ass is handed to him uh, by by Brady Belichick and the Patriots. Can the Steelers rebound, or are we looking at uh, the Seahawks? Uh, uh, I don't like statement. this matchup. I don't like this Seattle team going into Pittsburgh. I never liked Pete Carroll's Seattle team in September going to East Coast swing. They always get always get Maliwa. We all remember the Chicago Bears game of last year. We all remember. I forgot who they had to play the year before. This is a key key thing that you can always put on the books. In September, when the Seahawks go to the East Coast swing, they're going to get molly Wap. And the thing is, they're going against a team that was embarrassed on national TV. A Super Bowl coach that was embarrassed. A Super Bowl quarterback that was embarrassed. An organization that was embarrassed. I have respect for the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. And I see them, the, the Seahawks are going playing against us angry 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 team on the road and i think pittsburgh is going to put a a, a a shed whooping and the seahawks is just going into the ambush right now i gotta tell you if the, if the steelers don't that that stadium could revolt uh, i mean like it'd be week two even in pittsburgh if, if they come out looking like they did last week uh that is not going to go well uh for the steelers in there i don't think tomlin would ever have any kind of uh, worries about his job over there? I think he's the guy for life uh, as long as he wants it. Uh, but you know that you know that Pittsburgh coaching position is like a Supreme Court spot. You got to die to lose it. You got to die. You got to die or retire. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know the Seahawks didn't play well either. They also looking to make a statement. Their uh, th- their front line did not hold up the way it had hoped. Russell Wilson constantly being chased around. Tyler Lockett had one uh, one target. Uh, Metcalf looked pretty good. The rushing wasn't what they had hoped. This is a rush first team. Uh, their leading rusher, Chris Carson, had 46 yards. Uh, 
I don't know. Seahawks looking to make a statement too, but I, I don't like I don't like the situation. It feels like an ambush as well. I, I agree with that. Look out, Russ, because uh, mm-hmm. Pittsburgh is angry. Mm-hmm. All right, one more. We got a, a, a rematch here of the NFC Championship game from last year, an early season rematch. Uh, Saints-Rams. Talk to me about this one. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be the game right here, man. And I don't like the game for the Saints. I really don't. I just think they have too much emotional. It's just too much emotional assets right now they have in this game. They have just too much emotion. They have everything they're writing for this game. I don't like that on the road and against the Rams. Pretty much, I think the Rams are a better team than the Saints. I think roster-wise, they're a better team than the Orleans Saints. So with that said, uh, uh, the Rams playing at home against a superbly emotional team coming in. After this, on a short week for New Orleans, who played a tough, tough Monday night battle against the Texans. So they have one day of less preparation there to go fly into um, L.A. So I don't like this situation for New Orleans going into L.A. And it's too much emotion. I think the emotional is going to be a liability for them in this game. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about, too. The Rams have been living in the Saints' head uh, uh, for, for several months now and, and can't get out of it. You saw it at that game this week in New Orleans where guys, where fans dressed as the ref. There's T-shirts uh, complaining. It's it's they, they filed a grievance. You know, like it's it's everything down there is aimed at this. Uh, and, and both of these teams pulled out uh, victories. Uh, you know, Rams only win 30-27 over the Panthers, who look like dog do again here mm-hmm. on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and the Saints win in 30-28 over the Texans, uh, squeaking by there. Uh, neither one of these teams really looked like the dominant force that we expected them to be. But again, it's week one. It's, it's kind of preseason uh, going forward. So week two, I expect the Rams to step it up a little. I'm with you. Too much emotion uh, on the Saints end here. They've, the Rams have lived in their head. This it, it, this never goes well. This never, never goes well. It's not going to go like you think it's going to go, New Orleans. Exactly. All right, so that's our uh, our preview here of week two, Guru's preview of week two. Let's, uh, let's take a minute here and look at the college game with our man, the Almanac. 